Hey everyone, in this video we are going to hunt for cross-site scripting vulnerability by using Burpsuit. So let's get started. So uh, before that if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I have shown you some more ways by which we can hunt for cross-site scripting then I recommend you to please check that out and let's continue for this video. So we have this target over here zsphinx.co.in and we are going to hunt for XSS on this particular website. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, gather some more URL from this uh, domain. So I'm going to just Google Doc it. I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to type site and I'm just going to paste it over here. And these are all the links of this particular domain. We can see so many links are over here. So let's look for some particular uh, endpoint. Let's say I want to look for comments.php. So as you can see, there is no comments.php in the domain. So let's try to remove S and let's see what happens. And as we can see, we got some comment.php link over here. So I'm just going to open one of these in the new tab. And let's analyze this uh, link with more depth. So as you can see, this is the link. We have this ID parameter, which is equal to some random value, right? We can see that this is some random value, but in order to confirm that it is indeed a random value, we need to uh, capture the request in the pub suit. So I'm just going to capture this and I'm going to send this to repeater. And uh, let me off this intercept and now we are ready. So in the repeater, I'm just going to copy this value of this ID. So as I have told you in many videos that whenever you see double equals to in end of any uh, parameters value, then it is highly possible that that particular uh, value is base64 encoded, right? So in order to confirm this, I'm just going to copy this from here and I'm going to paste it to my decoder and let me close this and I'm just going to paste this and here let's try to decode this as base64 and perfect as you can see this is the hidden meaning behind this particular encoding 1172 so 1172 is behind this particular ID right so if I click on send and if I try to find this value I won't be able to get any reflection because this value is encoded and this is possible that the decoded value is reflecting in the response body. For that, we need to copy the response body uh, value of the decoded value. And I'm just going to paste this over here. And as you can see, the value, the decoded value is getting reflected in the response body, right? Which means that we have identified an injection point that could lead us to cross site scripting. Now, what we need to do, the second step, we need to test some dangerous character and we are going to see whether the character are rendering as it is in the response. So, but there is one more thing that in order for us to supply any value, the value should be base64 encoded, right? Let me show you what I mean by that. Suppose if I type my name over, let's say Fayaz and I'm going to send and if I find try to find this value, as you can see, there are zero matches, right? Which means there is no uh, value of Fayaz in this uh, response body. But since we know that this ID parameter contains an encoded base64 value, right? And the response contains the decoded value of this uh, parameters value, right? So what we can do is we can just go here and let me type my name, let's say Fayaz and I'm going to encode this as base64 and if I try to paste this encoded value here let me paste it and let's try to click on send and as you can see now it found one match which means that the decoded value is rendering inside the response body so we need to pass dangerous character by encoding it first into base64 so I'm just going to type, let me remove Fayal from here and instead of Fayal, I'm going to type Batman. And now let me type some dangerous characters like greater than or less than. And let's see how the web application is behaving. Um, and let's see what is the behavior of this 
web application when we supply this dangerous character. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it over here. Click on send and let's type Batman over here. Perfect. As you can see, the dangerous character is rendering as it is, which means that there is a high possibility, around 95% possibility that this application is vulnerable to cross site scripting. Now it's time for us to inject a payload and let's see what happens after that. So let us try to inject a very simple payload that we are doing so far in the previous videos. So script, uh, let me get rid of this. So as you can see here, it is ending with a uh, quotation and less than symbol, right? So I'm just going to supply this over here and I'm going to type script alert one and script tag close and here is the encoded value I'm just going to copy this and let's paste it over here perfect and let's try to see whether we were able to inject it or not and as you can see here we are able to inject the value right but there's one uh, problem over here. as you can see here this less than symbol is missing so we can analyze from this that there is some kind of protection the web application is using and now it's our challenge to bypass that protection in order to execute a successful cross site scripting vulnerability right so uh, let me just uh, click on show response in browser let me copy this and let's see whether we were able to uh, execute the payload or not and as you can see there is no xss payload executed which means that we were not uh, successful enough to execute this payload right now but we will just see this video now as we can see that uh, the less than symbol right is uh, somehow filtering which means that we need to think of a payload that doesn't include this less than symbol so and there's one more thing there's one more thing that the quotation is here which means whatever we are supplying in the input there will be this quotation and this less than symbol right so by using these two uh, you know by analyzing these two uh, things we can come up to a solution that could execute uh, that could lead us to find cross site scripting so there is one payload that will help us in that so i'm going to show you what it is so here what I'm going to do is I am going to type image src source equals to x on error alert one okay and less than but we know that this particular symbol is getting blocked by the web application so we have to get rid of this but we also know that if you get rid of this particular uh, less than symbol then the javascript code will not get executed right so instead of alert one i am going to supply just see javascript alert and let's say document or let's say one okay that's it this is the payload that we are going to inject in the web application and let's see what happens so I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it over here. Perfect. Let's see. As you can see, the payload is rendered successfully, right? Now let's try to see whether we were able to execute XSS or not. So I'm just going to click on show response to browser copy this and let's see whether we were able to execute the xss or not and perfect as you can see we were successfully able to execute cross site scripting vulnerability in the web application right so it was actually quite simple by analyzing and let me go back over here and let me show you that whatever we are supplying in the input this particular these two characters the quotation and the less than symbol will be there right 
so when let me show you the payload so this double quote and this quote will get balance and this symbol this less than symbol is going to complete our payload here as we can see that I have supplied this and it was automatically completed by this double quote right and this less than symbol completed our image tag in the application therefore we were successful in executing the payload on this particular web application right so I hope you understand that how we can find cross site scripting with Burpsuit in the web application which uses some kind of protection to protect themselves from executing JavaScript on their site, right? If you have any doubts and issues then please do let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching.